In this week's assignment, and this is the second part of the first video, talk about heat and matter. So this second part really get into energy and how we look at it and how we measure it. We talked about BTUs in the first video, but now we're going to take it to the next level. As we look at heat energy, uh, we can quantify it by looking at the quantity of energy times the specific heat times the uh, weight of that substance times its change in temperature. So the definition of a specific heat is the amount of energy it takes to raise or lower one pound of a substance one degree Fahrenheit. So in other words, aluminum, iron, water, uh, alcohol, plastic, everything has a specific heat number. So it's the amount of heat it takes to raise it one degree Fahrenheit of that one pound of that substance. For example, water specific heat is one. It takes one pound or for one pound of water, it takes one BTU to raise it one degree Fahrenheit. Matter of fact, that is the definition of a BTU, the amount of energy it takes to raise one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. So, when we look at other substances, we can call it a specific heat. So, specific heat is the amount of energy it takes to raise one pound of the substance one degree Fahrenheit. So, the energy in BTUs. So, each pound of the substance will have a special number. For in other words, like I said, water has a specific heat of one. If the number is less than one, meaning that it will retain or give out less heat per pound than water will. If the number is larger than one, of course, it can retain or dissipate more heat per pound than water can. So, this number is always based uh, in, in the fraction or parts of a number because it's based on one. One with the standard what everything is based on. So the weight is fairly easy. So if you take a pound or 10 pounds or 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds of a substance, weigh it, if you make multiply it times specific heat, then it would be the change in temperature. This symbol, this triangle, is the Greek symbol of delta. So a lot of times we call it delta T, or the change in temperature. So if we look at a substance and we want to measure it, uh, it's very simple. We can take it and uh, look at it and determine how much heat it would take. So if we look at, let's say, water. And we want to raise it uh, 10 degrees, and we had 10 pounds of it. So the specific heat is 1 times 10 degrees and it's one pound. So it would take one times one times 10. So it would take 10 BTUs to raise one pound of water 10 degrees. Very simple. So the problem comes in when we look at heat in a different way. The matter of a substance, <clears throat> there's basically three states of matter. So in other words, like water, it could be in three states. It could be a solid, which is ice. It could be a liquid, which is water. Or it could be a gas or vapor, which is steam. So each one of those is a state of matter. So we look at it in that form, as we look in the HVAC field, we look at a substance and look at the amount of heat it can obtain or transfer based on the state it's in. So, and everything will have different specific heat. <clears throat> Matter of fact, water, once you freeze it, it specific heat changes. It's 0.5. And if it's the same uh, weight, one pound, and to change it 10 degrees, it will actually have less than that. It will only be 5 BTUs instead of 10 BTUs. The same thing goes for steam. Steam specific heat is also 0.5. So it actually can retain less heat energy in a frozen state or in the gas state than water can itself per pound. So it's very interesting to see that 
on how things can change based on the state it is in. So this is the state of matter. And as we look at this and matter, three states of matter. And it could be a solid, it could be a liquid, or it can be a vapor or gas. Three states of matter. Three states, solid. So in other words, you say, well, how can things be in three states? The state we take iron is in a solid state at a natural uh, form. Put enough heat to it, we can liquefy it and it can flow. It can become a, a fluid. If you add enough heat energy to it, it can change its state into a vapor. And it happens all the time in uh, different uh, occurrences out in nature. Let's say in the volcano that become its explosions and the, uh, a solid uh, magma can turn into a uh, liquid and the temperature is high enough in the right conditions and pressures and things like that, it can turn into a vapor also. So it's amazing in, in our atmosphere, uh, the states of matter will change. So we know it happens naturally, and of course, with enough energy, you can change uh, different substances into different states of matter. So that's the most important thing when you look at uh, heat matter and energy and other things like that. So we need to understand that because even in our field, we can see ice changing or we can see a liquid gas turning into a vapor in a refrigeration system or even how the power companies store uh, natural gas in a liquid state because it takes up less volume, but they actually have it to absorb heat energy from the atmosphere to turn it back into a gas before it's sent through the piping. So it happens all the time, and as a technician, we need to understand that.